Richard J. Evans, in his book, Death in Hamburg, chronicles several outbreaks of cholera in the city of Hamburg throughout the 19th century. While Evans covers several of these outbreaks, they pale in comparison to the epidemic of 1892. The cholera outbreak that struck the town was not only significant due to the, due to the destruction it wrought, but also because of the staggering ineptitude of the city's leaders. It highlights how crises can spiral out of control, largely due to a confluence of miscommunications, outright lies, and failures of leadership. Small missteps can lead to the precipice. During the summer of 1892, the warning signs were present. A heat wave in the region combined with lower water levels in the river provided a wonderful breeding ground for cholera. Hamburg drew its drinking water from this river and the filters were not installed. The stage was set for a cataclysm. Early cases were occurring amongst sewer workers, migrants, and sailors. Yet these cases were ignored because city leaders had adopted a policy of, quote, not diagnosing isolated cases as cholera at all and waiting until an epidemic had actually broken out before confirming the disease's presence, unquote. Even when these cases were confirmed to be cholera, the doctor who had discovered it was disregarded. Thus begins a cavalcade of incompetence and arguably criminal negligence. The city government, even when being informed, could not make decisions on the issue for three days. A quirk in their political system contributed to tragedy. By the time the Senate was able to decide, it was too late. Gallons of contaminated water had already been consumed. The people of Hamburg unknowingly poisoned themselves. Even when the Senate was able to meet, their response was delayed by rife political bickering. Nonetheless, the primary concern of the Senate was, quote, the potential damage to Hamburg's trade from quarantine measures, unquote. Arguably, this is the reason for the delay in the first place. What is more egregious is that the Senate had, quote, no contingency plans to deal with an epidemic, unquote. They opted to hope that an epidemic would not happen. When it was on their doorstep, they dithered. Eventually, the crisis came to so severe that the central government took notice. Robert Koch himself arrived in Hamburg to help with the response. Immediately, he was spurned by the chief medical officer, Kraus. Koch felt as if he was wandering through a maze of half-truths and outright lies, his suggestions rebuked. The crisis escalated to such an extent that he commented, quote, gentlemen, I forget that I am in Europe, unquote. Evans makes a compelling case that negligence and ignorance on part of Hamburg's leadership were largely to blame for the crisis, particularly when one looks at Hamburg's neighbors. In particular, Eve Evans implies that the Senate was willfully blind to the impending crisis. While the case is compelling, to what extent is it a form of presentism? Looking back on events, things always seem obvious. To what extent, though, did the Senate truly believe that the doctor's warning of epidemic were chicken littles? Only now can we see that they were really Cassandra's. Yet the Senate itself is not entirely to blame. The medical establishment shares a good part of the blame. Many of the methods of treatment were very dangerous. This combined with a long-term public fear of hospitals and experimentation on patients led people to distrust their doctors. In the end, at least 8,000 people perished, 13.4% of the entire city's population. The tragedy of Hamburg was the result of a confluence of events, an initial denial, followed by a delayed response, compounded by political bickering, professional rivalry, and arrogance, people mistrusting hospital, and a lack of resources. All of these factors led to the, one of the worst epidemics in Hamburg's history.